Look at these. These are beautiful. These are actual 3D printed models of children's hearts. We're talking right now with Justin Ryan. He's a researcher at the Phoenix Children's Hospital, uh, and he runs the 3D lab. With him, Stephanie Starks. She's the mother of one of the children. Hello, it's good to have you and welcome. Hi. Hello. Wow, this is an amazing story. First of all, uh, tell us your story, uh, Stephanie, if you don't mind. What, uh, tell us what happened. Well, I um, was pregnant with our third child and got the anatomy ultrasound. Everything looked great. My husband and I, you know, did the high five. We have a healthy baby. We've done it. We're so happy. Gave birth a few months later. Turns out she was, she is missing half of her heart. Mm. So she began to struggle to breathe. We were at home and uh, she closed her eyes and she stopped breathing. Oh. And we called 911. They rushed us to Phoenix Children's Hospital. And uh, she's a, day, a couple days old. And the doctor comes out and says uh, she's missing half of her heart. And, and I had never heard of such a thing. So I'm thinking that I'm surely going to lose my baby. Yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't live without a heart. That's kind of important. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was living a nightmare. Yeah, that's Gemma. That's my, my sweet Aww. baby. Um, they uh, then introduced us to her cardiologist and said, well, we can do surgery. We can help her. And uh, she may even be able to live and have a full life. I literally fell to my knees, could not even imagine that they could do this for me. And, uh, and they did. So she's had three open heart surgeries. She's now almost two. Yeah, there she is. Oh, it was... It must be hard to see your baby like that. I, I can only imagine. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to bring this all back. But she's two now. And it, how's she doing? Amazing. Uh, amazing. She is thriving. She's oh. talking. She's running. She's jumping. Oh she's my falling. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations. That's that wonderful. was on her. That's her one year heart anniversary. Oh. That's her shirt for her one year after her first uh, open heart surgery. She's in every way a miracle, but um, she's really here because of this guy next to me, Dr. Justin Ryan. <laughs> he's doing incredible life saving work here, and uh, he's a big reason that uh, I'm able to hug. And, and watch my child grow. Oh, He's, he, they've, they've saved her life and given her an incredibly full life. Well, we're so happy for you. Uh, Thank you. Justin, tell us about the procedure. What is it that you do? Is this, uh, and uh, I take it these are actually... You yeah, these. well, the one that Padre is holding is actually Gemma's heart. No. Oh, yeah, see the missing yeah. part? <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah, if you look, there's, it's the, there's next to the big red part is a tiny purple part. And that purple part is supposed to be the same size. It, it just didn't grow. It, uh -huh. This is actually a fairly, um, uh, it's kind of blue actually. Yeah, that part you're touching with your fingers yeah. to below. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the underdeveloped. That's her right side, uh, her right uh, ventricle it just didn't grow and like it was supposed to. So normally, you know, 20 years ago, these kids were sent home to die. Yeah. So and how did today, Justin, how do, you, how do you make this model, first of all? Yeah, well, each of these comes from an actual patient. So we, we start with the patient. Uh, in Gemma's case, on day three, she received a CT scan with a contrast agent, which illuminated part of her heart. Um, and if uh, we can get the, the tech people there, I'm gonna try to share my screen so okay. I can show Let's what a, a CT scan looks like. You may be able wow. to make a heart model. I doubt very much we're gonna be able to do that. Oh, it oh, worked. Oh, wow, okay. All right, <laughs> so here's a CT scan. So this is basically a slice right through the chest as I kind of scroll back and forth. Right, right. So these large black areas are the lungs. These central areas are basically the contrast parts or the areas of blood. So if these are a bunch of slices of data, we can kind of stack them one on top of another in order to create a three-dimensional model. Wow. wow. Oh, uh, Dr. Ryan, I, I've seen I've seen CT scans before. I've seen MRI scans. How much more important is it to have an actual 3D model of the heart for for a surgeon? Well, it gives them more information than ever before. Before a doctor would have to look at a two-dimensional CT scan, even though it's a three-dimensional volume, each of those slices is discrete. So, giving them more information than ever before 
um, we perceive helps them out. So holding a heart in their hand before they ever set room in the operating room. So on, on day three, Gemma had the CT scan, we produced the model, and then I believe on day eight is when the first surgery happened. So a doctor actually saw the heart before they were ever in the operating room. They, and they knew what, the, and this is so accurate that they were able to really look at it and, and kind of plan the surgery and figure out what they're gonna do? Exactly. Oh, what are uh, all these colors? I, we see so many different colors and I- This is not a color of a heart, obviously. No, obviously not, but I mean, it, it must mean something to a surgeon. It does mean something to a surgeon. It means something to a student learning medicine. It means something to a family member. Uh, when I, you know, hold a, a heart up, uh, if I present this to a family and say, this is tetralogy of flow with multiple aortopulmonary collateral arteries, <laughs> suddenly they gloss <laughs> over with all that information. Yeah. But if I can say the, the blue parts are supposed to be oxygen poor, red parts are supposed to be oxygen rich, and the green parts shouldn't be there, uh, you know, oh. suddenly things start clicking. And then you can go into more and more detail. Wow. But it, it's, it's all about information, creating something nice and succinct that, that conveys information either to a surgeon, to a student learning medicine, or to a family member who is going through a very, very difficult time. You, 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 it looks like you do this with other body parts as well? Yeah, uh, behind me here is kind of a, a tray of different anatomies uh, to, to show how different technologies work. So the heart models are using a 3D printer that does full color. It's kind of like a resin, but uh, we also do plastic parts. So this is a kind of brain lobe. Wow. But then you can do some cool stuff with that. You can create wow. a silicone mold out of that 3D printed brain oh my. and cast whatever you want inside there. If it's uh, a ballistics gelatin or a different type of silicone, wow. uh, the possibilities are really endless. Um, just tons of different anatomies. This is a different 3D printed model printed on an object machine by Stratasys and it's flexible. Wow. So this is an aorta of a, I believe a 65 year old person. And what's inside of here are materials of different hardnesses, so representing plaque. So you can a actually interventionalist see the can actually in go in there and deploy incredible. a device to see how anatomy reacts. Incredible. You use, it looks like a Z-Corp printer there behind you? Yes, the Z-Corp printer is a big printer. Uh, it was about $70,000 when we initially got it. So a bit of a buy-in, but it allowed us to do, you know, incredible models, give physicians more information than ever before. The cool thing about the Z Corp printer is it does full color. So it allows us to really capture yeah. all the information we want to show in one single model. Were you trained in this, Dr. Ryan? Is this your, are you a 3D printer expert or did you have to acquire <laughs> this skill uh, in, in the process of doing this? Uh, I'm certainly becoming quite the expert. My background's <laughs> in animation. I got oh, my oh, wow. graduate okay. in digital art. I uh, had a very, very good advisor. Uh, Dr. David Frakes, who had this vision for this lab, he brought me in into his engineering team, and then subsequently I got my master's and PhD in biomedical engineering, and I'm the lead research scientist in the lab doing these these models. Is Phoenix Children's Hospital the only hospital doing this, or is it starting to become more commonplace? It is certainly starting to become more and more commonplace. Um, right now, though, just a, a few handfuls of, of hospitals are doing this. Uh, Mayo Rochester has a great program. Children's Hospital Philadelphia, DC Children's uh, are really the big ones right now. Uh, Toronto Sick Kids as well. But it, it is a hefty buy-in. The Z Corp machines, about $70,000. Some of the, the more fancier printers, $300 plus $1,000. So the challenge is to bring this technology to, to more and more hospitals. So we have a FlashForge creator, which is more of a maker style machine. And we're trying to get that machine to produce 80% the accuracy of the $70,000 printer at 2% the cost. Right. So we do recognize that smaller hospitals need this technology, but we, we it's, it's a challenge to, to, to downgrade basically from the 70,000 to the sub 2000 printer. And Dr. Ryan, it's, it's interesting that, that you bring up the maker community because I, I look at that flash forge and I, I look at the resolution of this print. It is, it is absolutely amazing. And the material that it uses is unlike anything I've ever used. And I do a lot of 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering if, if you could inspire a generation of makers to really get to it, what, what, what's important? When you look at the quality of prints, when you look at the materials that you want to use, what should we be working on as the maker community to help you? What kind of technology should we develop for your work? Um, that's a great question. Uh, well, one thing is, is just to, to get interested in. Don't be afraid to 
email your nearest hospital. If you have a printer and you have time, then email the, the heart center at your local hospital, email the orthopedics program and see what you can do. But also for specifically for, for the, the do it yourself or the maker, you know, understanding that this print does not need to be the final step. You can go to a casting step. So this brain was 3D printed on a, a dimension machine, so basic FDM technology, but we made a cast out of it. And this cast allows us to uh, create a mold out of it, sorry. Uh, but we can cast whatever we want inside here. If that's plastic, if that's a gelatin material, if it's a silicone. So material properties really open up. So understand that the final model doesn't need to be the direct 3D print. It could, it could be a cat, it could be yes, a, 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 a mold. Well, uh, let's go a little sci-fi here. How long before there's already research into this, we start printing actual, actual organs and actual <laughs> body parts and actual bones. Wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, it, it's definitely a challenge and it's hard to say. Some centers are certainly doing tissues, early uh, organs. Uh, I know Rice University has a great program under Jordan Miller, so I'm excited to see what he comes up with. The challenge is if we visualize just a spherical organ, as you start printing layer by layer by layer, there's a dead area on the inside that no oxygen, no nutrients is getting to. So the challenge is how can we print vasculature at the same time as we're printing tissue? And that's, that's the kind of great challenge right now that we see. But it's certainly getting there. The other thing is just like 3D printing, sometimes it's not the final step. Maybe we can print off a scaffolding that we seed with cells mm. that might be the, the best option to get to. All right, just grow the cells inside of the structure that you want it to take. That's, that's amazing. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm blown away. Not often do we get to, to combine such a heartwarming story and such an incredible tech story. This, this is one for the books. Stephanie, I'm sure you're, pretty, you're very glad you went to Phoenix Children's Hospital. Oh, uh, I, they, to, to be, you know, three days postpartum, find out that your child oh. may be dying. And then, you know, the cardiologist comes in with pen and paper and tries to draw a heart. Yeah, I, I took biology <laughs> in college. I don't remember that much about hearts. It, and what do you mean the right side didn't grow? It doesn't make sense. Then when Justin comes out with this model, it, it changes everything. And not just for me. So my daughter's getting older. Her right, the right side of her heart is not gonna grow back. This is, right. this is her heart. Right. Um, it's functional, um, but it's different. But now I can hand this to her. I can show her this is what your heart looks like. This is what you're dealing with. It takes the confusion away. Um, you know, some of these negative feelings of what's wrong with me now becomes, oh, look, this is this is what I have to work with. It, it's it's incredible. It's completely changed our lives. And I gave Stephanie the STL, the, the 3D file of Gemma, <laughs> and she went to, uh, I think, Shapeways. Oh, yeah. look at this. And she actually you got some jewelry. Jenna's heart might not oh be my super gosh. clear. <laughs> oh. So I, I wear her heart. You literally wear her day. heart. Oh. I literally wear her heart. Yep, it stays oh. by mine all the time. That is so touching. What is Op Heart before we go? Well, we are trying to create a clinical trial around this to not just print off models and give them to surgeons, but make sure we understand how they affect the surgery. Do we reduce surgical time? Do we reduce morbidity and mortality? So this clinical trial will be key to showing that. Uh, in order to do that, we need to fund it. So OpHeart is a nonprofit group that, that has two main focuses. One is providing pediatricians, uh, pediatric surgeons with more tools such as 3D printing. So they're helping to fund the clinical trial, but they also focus on giving families more information than ever before, helping uh, a family understand what hospital has in terms of surgical outcomes. So you know where to best go for your, your child with a very specific um, heart issue. Could you spell the uh, URL? Is it O P H E A R T? That's correct. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Everybody yes. should visit and uh, and support Op Heart. Uh, I I can't thank you enough, Justin and Stephanie, for sharing. Just Stephanie for sharing your story with us. Uh, we wish all the best for Gemma. I, it's such a heartwarming story. It's uh, such a great outcome. And thank Justin, you so much. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. And if anyone wants information on the lab itself or to see more of the yeah. cool projects we have specifically. Cardiac3dprintlab.com is specific to the lab. And um, we also have an email on there. If anyone has any questions, feel free to email us. Well, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of people in the maker community very interested now. Justin Ryan, uh, Stephanie Starks, thanks for joining us on the new screensaver. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really uh, 
beautiful story, heartwarming it's incredible. story. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine as Gemma grows up, this was your heart? Yeah, you have a picture of your heart, the, the thing that almost killed you. Unbelievable. Wow.